So having learned about refraction, what we want to do in this video is learn how we can harness refraction to focus or defocus light. And to do that, we need something called a lens. Now lenses come in one of two types. This is called a converging lens. Its center is thicker than the edge. And so parallel light that is incident on this side of the lens converges to a point and that point is called the focal point, and the distance from the focal point to the lens is called the focal length. Now the other type of lens that we can have is a diverging lens, such as this one. This has the edges and the center the opposite way round. The edge is wider and thicker than the center of the lens, so when parallel light comes through on this side, it is made to diverge as if it all came from a single point on the opposite side of the lens. That point is called the focal point, and again, the distance from it to the lens is called the focal length. Now, the surfaces of these lenses are spherical. And so if you look here, you can see that there's a slight curvature to the side uh, of this lens. And so this lens forms part of the surface of a sphere. And the same applies for this diverging lens, only in this case, it bends inwards. And so we call it a concave lens. Um, and this bulges outwards, so we call it convex. Now, the other approximation we're going to use when we're dealing with these lenses is that we're assuming they're thin lenses. In other words, the thickness of the glass here is not going to cause a deflection of the ray. What we're interested in is the angle of refraction that we get when a ray of light hits this side of the lens and the angle of refraction we get when it emerges from the lens back into the air. And that is how we focus the light. What we aren't going to worry about is the fact that it does travel through a small thickness of glass, and so that will generate a deflection of the ray. We're assuming that deflection is negligible. So now we've got the basics of lenses. Let's have a look at how we can use a lens both to focus or defocus light, as well as to generate images. So here are the two basic type of lenses. We have uh, converging lenses uh, on the top and diverging lenses on the bottom. And a common feature of all converging lenses is that they are wider in the uh, uh, center than they are at the edges out here. And basically, there are three types. There's types where you have the opposite curvature of both sides, and these are generally uh, spherical surfaces. So they're a, a part of a sphere. I mean, obviously only a small part of the sphere, but nevertheless a uh, part of the sphere. And typically, if we're talking thin lenses, where we can neglect the actual thickness of the lens, so that although we know that the light is going to come in here, be refracted at this surface, and be refracted again, um, we can ignore the displacement that occurs as the light travels from one side of the lens to the other. In other words, we can assume that this is a, sh a short distance, so it's a thin lens. So we have two spherical surfaces with opposite uh, a radius of curvature. So the radius of curvature here is if you imagine this is the uh, a sphere and then you have a center of the sphere sort of over here somewhere that gives us this uh, a curvature of the surface. Then there's the plano uh, convex, and so here we have a curvature on one side and then the other side is completely flat. Um, convex means that the surface bulges outwards, um, and so plano convex means it's flat on one side, it's convex on the other. The double curvature is double convex. And then we have the meniscus lens here, where we have curvature, both um, sides curve in the same way, but one has a smaller radius of curvature than the other, and if you're far-sighted, uh, this is probably what your uh, lens in your glasses uh, will look like, yeah, but that's for far-sighted people. For diverging lenses, we have double concave. Again, these are spherical surfaces, um, but now we have that it's narrower in the center 
than and it's wider at the edges and this is the common feature of a diverging lens so here we have the two spherical surfaces um, with opposite radius of curvature and so this is double and then we call this concave because it bends inwards if you imagine if you try to remember the difference between concave and convex the concave part forms a small cave and it is a very very small cave but nevertheless if you think of it that way it helps uh, uh, differentiate between the two plano concave where we have the spherical surface on one side and then it's flat uh, uh, on this side so plano plane flat and then concave on the other and then again we have the meniscus lens and again if you're short-sighted like me uh, this is the type of lens that you've got in your uh, spectacles Okay, so these are the different types of lenses. So how does light pass through them? So here we have the two different types of uh, uh, lenses. So here's our converging uh, lens and here's our uh, diverging lens. And in both cases, what we're showing here is we're showing parallel uh, rays of light. And the rays are coming in and in the case of the converging lens, these parallel rays that are that are perpendicular to the plane of the lens itself will all get focused to a single point and this point is called the focal point of the lens so this is the point where rays that are par perpendicular to the plane of the lens will all get focused to a point and the distance between the plane of the lens and this point is called the focal length now, this is why a converging lens is called converging, because you can see the parallel rays of light are all forced to converge at a single point. Now, for a diverging lens, we have the same concept. We have a focal point, and it lies a distance of one focal length away from the plane of the lens. However, in this case what happens is the parallel rays of light that are perpendicular to the plane of the lens are all uh, uh, bent such that it appears that they all diverge from a single point, which is this focal point. So this is why it's called a diverging lens, because it's starting with the parallel rays of light, and they all end up diverging from this uh, focal point, whereas for the converging lens, they all end up passing through the focal point. So what I've got here is a plano convex lens. So it's a converging lens. It's flat on one side, it's curved on the other. Since it's thinner at the edges and thicker in the middle, it's gonna give me a, a converging lens effect. So if I put this here next to our uh, ray box, then you can see that the parallel rays on this side are now focused into a single point here. So this is the focal point of the lens, and this distance from the flat surface of the lens to the focal point is the focal length of the lens. And as you can see, if you look closely for the ray in the middle here, I'll adjust it slightly, and the ray in the middle now is passing through, uh, is passing along the optical axis of the lens, so it's passing through the center of the lens, and as you can see, it's undeflected. It doesn't get deflected because the two surfaces of the lens at this point are parallel to one another. So that's a converging lens. What about a diverging lens? Well, here I've got now a plano concave lens, so it's thinner in the middle and it's wider at the edges, and this side is uh, uh, flat, this side is concave. And if I put that in close to the uh, ray box here, then you can see that the rays on the other side now diverge as if they were coming from a point, and that point is going to be the focal, uh, uh, the focal point of the lens. And so if I move this further away, you might be able to see it, but the rays get a little bit um, fainter. So here you can see that they're parallel on this side, and then you have the five rays here all diverging from a point, and they all diverge from the focal point of the lens that's somewhere on the other side of this ray box. So we can see that both converging and diverging lenses behave as expected and have uh, focal points and a focal length. So supposing now we want to uh, study how a lens generates an image. Well, what we do is we start with one of these diagrams here where this line represents 
the lens. Now the lens extends infinitely in both directions. So this little diagram here is just to indicate the lens type. And so you can see here that we've got the bulging on both sides. So this is a converging uh, lens. However, we are taking it to extend over this entire plane. And since we're making this thin lens approximation, what we're going to do is we're going to have the rays of light bend, if, if applicable, um, on this uh, plane of the lens. Now the other thing to define here is what we call the optical axis. Now the optical axis of a lens goes through the center of the lens and it go well it go well, it doesn't actually have to go through the center of the lens it goes through the point where the two faces are parallel. So if you notice here the two faces of the lens here are parallel. And so where the two uh, faces of the lens are parallel, that is what we define as the optical axis for the lens. Now, in many lenses, this will occur right in the center of the lens, but not always. For example, if you look at your, if you wear glasses and you have a look at your glasses, then you will notice that the point where the two uh, um, surfaces are parallel is not necessarily in the center of the lens. It depends on the type of uh, spectacles you're wearing, but it's not guaranteed to be right in the, in the center. So this defines the parallel parallel, the optical axis um, of the lens, it's where the two faces are parallel. And then we have three rules for generating what we call the principal uh, rays. Now, of course, there are far more than just these uh, three principal rays. However, these three principal rays follow rules which are very easy to uh, uh, draw. So what we start with is the simplest one, is any ray passing through the center of the lens. And remember, the center of the lens is defined as where the optical axis uh, crosses the plane of the lens. And any ray passing through there is undisturbed. It is not bent. Now, of course, what we know will happen is it will refract at this surface here, and then it will refract in the opposite direction here. Since the two surfaces are parallel, the ray will end up traveling in the same direction. But of course, there will be a deflection because of the thickness of the lens. But remember, we're dealing with a thin lens. So we're saying that this thickness here is, is, is so small that we can ignore it. And so in that case, this ray is undisturbed. So that's passing through the center of the lens where the optical axis uh, crosses the plane of the lens. Now, the next one to draw is one that is perpendicular to the plane of the lens and parallel to the optical axis. So we've got a ray that's coming in here, perpendicular to the plane, parallel to the optical axis. Any such ray on a converging lens will be focused through the focal point, right? So it'll come in here parallel and then it will pass through the focal point and the focal point is um, marked here by these lines that are on the optical axis and there are two focal points for any lens, one on each side of the lens, right? So if I had a ray coming in this way that was parallel, it would be focused through this focal point here. Now, the last uh, one is a ray that passes through the focal point on this side of the lens. And any ray that passes through the focal point when it gets to the lens here will be refracted so that it ends up parallel to the optical axis of the lens. And so that's our third principal ray. So we've got three rays now. One going through the center of the lens is undeflected. One that is parallel to the optical axis will be deflected to pass through the focal point on the other side for a converging lens. And one that comes from the focal point on one side of the lens will be refracted to end up parallel to the optical axis. And so these are the three principal rays that are easy to draw. And so if we take these rays, say, from some image that was sitting here, some object, and these rays all originate uh, from here. Now, of course, that's not particularly well drawn. If at some point these rays also come back together, uh, and again, because of my bad drawing, that doesn't happen, but if they all came together at a, at a, at a, at a second point, this would be where the image would form. And so 
<coughs> that's, um, we'll look at that in a minute um, and we'll do the proper geometric drawing so that you can see how uh, images get formed. But first, let's have a look at the same three principal rays, but now for a diverging lens. So now we have the same setup. Remember this line here uh, represents the lens. It goes through the plane of the lens, but now we've got a diverging lens and we've still got these uh, uh, focal points here um, that are at the same distance. This is the focal length here and this is also the focal length here. And just like for a converging lens, we have one on each side. Now, again, we're going to have three principal rays. Now, the first one is quite simple. The, it's the same as for, the conver uh, for a converging lens. Any ray that passes through the center of the lens is um, undeflected. And again, this is because we define this optical axis. Remember, this is the uh, optical axis of the lens. Um, optical axis of the lens. And so remember here, this is defined as the point where the two faces of the lens are parallel to one another. And since we're assuming it's a thin lens, then there is no deflection uh, due to refraction at this point. Now we can look at the uh, uh, other principal axis, uh, principal ray that we had before. And that was one that was parallel to the optical axis. Now remember, for a diverging lens, it causes the uh, rays to diverge all from the focal length. So here what happens is it doesn't get bent to pass through the focal length on this side. It gets bent so that it appears to have come from the focal point on this side. So if we draw a line between the focal point and where our ray hits the lens, and then we just carry on on the other side, in the same direction, and that's our second principal ray. So it starts parallel to the optical axis, and it's refracted so that it appears to come from the focal point on the other side. Now, the last one we have is a ray that is aimed at the focal point on this side. So now, let's, uh, let's draw it out here because we're not worrying about images. So supposing I have a ray that's coming in like this, all right, and if I extend this trajectory onwards, it's heading at the focal point on this side. This ray will get refracted so that it is parallel to the optical axis. So it's the same sort of principles that we saw for the converging lens. The ray through the center is exactly the same for both converging and diverging lenses. But in the diverging lens case, a parallel ray is refracted so it appears to come from the focal point on the same side as the ray that hits the lens. And the other cases, the uh, ray is coming in and is, appear is aimed at the focal point on the opposite side of the lens. When it hits the lens, it's refracted to end up parallel to the optical axis. So let's see how these three principal rays allow us to figure out where an image will be produced by a lens. So here we have a converging lens that is producing an image of an object that is sitting here. So conventionally in geometric optics, uh, the way we draw an object is something simple like an arrow. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the points, the rays of light emanating from the top of the object and we'll use those to see, first of all, whether there is an image produced, and secondly, to see what the size and location of that image is going to be. So let's draw the three principal rays, which you can already see here. So the first principal ray goes parallel to the optical axis and is then refracted to pass through the uh, focal point um, on the other side of the lens. And it carries on for as long as we need it. The second ray goes through the center of the lens and is undeflected, so that just carries on as a straight line. And then the third principal ray passes through the focal point on this side, hits the lens, and is refracted to be parallel to the optical axis. And what we can see here is that these three principal rays converge at a single point, and that point where they converge, that's if they do converge, they do in this case, the point at which they converge will produce an image. And since we took it from the top of the object here, the point at which they converge will be the top of the image.
Now, the other thing to note here is these are real light rays, right? These are the, the trajectories of three real rays of light. Of course, there are going to be rays in the middle here. The principal rays are just three of the, all the possible rays that will come out of here. There are going to be rays here in the middle that will get refract, refracted at the lens and, and reach the, the same point here. So, but these are real rays, and so what we have here is a real image, which means that if I put a screen at this point, I could project the image onto the screen and you would be able to see it. So, the height, uh, the point at which these converge represents the point of the image, and so you can see that first of all the image is smaller than the object, so we're going to end up with a smaller image, and secondly it's inverted, it's upside down. Um, you can see here that you know, we're still, the bottom is still touching the optical axis, this is always going to be true uh, for any uh, image, since a ray from here will pass through the center of the lens and end up here, um, and so if we took, you know, point at halfway up the uh, uh, object here, we'd end up closer, uh, these would all refocus at a similar point that would be that much closer to the optical axis. So we're going to end up with a smaller image, you know, uh, uh, forming at this point, and the position of the image, uh, of course, is going to depend on the location of the object. And so here we have an object that is beyond the focal point of the lens, right? So it's further away from from the lens than the focal point. So what we've got here is a red uh, light bulb, a converging lens, and a screen behind. And we set it up so that we're projecting a real image of this light bulb onto the screen, which you can hopefully see there. So in this case, the light bulb is further from the lens than the focal length and so as we've seen this generates a real image and a real image can be projected just as we've done here. So here we have the same converging lens but now we have put our object uh, closer than the focal point and we can see that we're going to have quite a different result than what we had before. So again, we do our three principal, uh, three principal rays. We start parallel to the optical axis, we get refracted, and we pass through the focal point on this side. We have the second ray, it comes straight through the middle of the lens, and then the third ray uh, comes from the focal point. Now here, obviously, since the object is closer than the focal point, it won't actually pass through the focal point, but in this case, a ray that's on the same trajectory as if it came from the focal point will refract parallel to the lens, and that's, of course, because the lens has no idea where the ray actually comes from. It doesn't know whether it's passed through the focal point. It could come from here, it could come from the focal point, or it could come from somewhere nearer the focal point. It doesn't matter where the ray starts. What matters is that the line of the ray passes through the focal point here, and so it ends up parallel to the optical axis. Now here you can see these three rays don't uh, meet up at any single point, so there's clearly no real image. You know, if I put a screen here, I'm not going to get a projected image of, of whatever the object is. But if we trace these rays back, and so we just draw lines back from the three rays, then what we see is that they all converge at this point here. And so if I'm out here and I'm looking with my eye at the um, rays coming out, it will appear that the rays coming from the lens all came from this point here. And so what I have, since this isn't a real image, it's what we call a virtual image. In other words, this isn't something that's real, but if I'm on the other side of the lens looking at the picture that the lens is producing or looking at the light that's coming from the lens, it will appear to me as if all the light uh, coming from the lens uh, came from this very large uh, image um, on the other side of the lens, even though there isn't any real uh, uh, image here. It only appears that way when I look through the lens at this large image. And this is exactly how a magnifying glass works.
right? So when you uh, uh, take a magnifying lens and you put it up close to something, right? So in other words, with inside the focal point, right? Because this is the uh, this is the focal point. So the distance of the object is less than the focal length from the lens. When you do that, you produce a virtual image through the lens, which is a magnified version of the object that you're looking at. So that's a virtual image. Now the other thing to notice about a virtual image is it's produced on the same side of the lens as the uh, object and it's also the right way up. It's not inverted, it's the same way up. So what we're seeing here is a virtual image situation with a converging lens. So here's our converging lens, here is our object and here we have our three rays. Now these aren't going to be the three principal rays because we're limited what we can provide with the ray box, but they are going to be three rays. And what you can see here is that we do at least have one principal ray. This bottom one here is passing roughly through the center of the lens. And although it's offset by a small distance because this lens clearly has a finite thickness, it's not an ideal thin lens, the ray remains roughly parallel as it goes through the center of the lens, and so this is one of our principal rays. Now, the other rays pass through the lens and are refracted by it, but what you can see on this side of the lens is that if we trace these rays back, we're going to end up with these three rays here converging, but they're going to converge at a point somewhere up here, and they're going to form a virtual image because the image will be on the same side as the object and it's going to be a larger size than the actual size of the object. So what this is showing is that here we have the object is closer than the focal length um, of this converging lens and so that's exactly what we'd expect. We'd expect a virtual image to be formed on the same side as the object and we'd expect that image to be larger than the object. So now what we're going to demonstrate is the formation of a virtual image. Now a virtual image can't be projected, you have to look through the lens to see it. So if I hold the lens up, you should be able to see um, an image of my eyes, because uh, I can just about see the camera here, and it looks a lot larger than uh, normal life, and this is a virtual image, my head is closer to the lens than the focal length, and so I'm producing an enlarged virtual image through the lens. So enough of that. <laughs> so here we have a diverging lens, and uh, this is our object here, and I've put it in this case beyond the focal uh, uh, point, so beyond the focal length away from the lens, but in fact for, for in this sort of case it, it, it doesn't actually matter. The result will be the same, we'll still get uh, the same result. So again, we do our three principal rays. We start off with one that is parallel to the optical axis. It is refracted at the lens so that it appears to come from the uh, focal point here because now we have a diverging lens. The second ray passes through the center of the lens and uh, passes through undisturbed. And then the third ray here is aimed at the focal point on this side. So it's aiming at the focal point here and it is refracted so that it ends up parallel to the optical axis. So again, we're not producing a real image. These three light rays here do not converge at a point. We're not going to have a real image on the other side of the lens. But if we trace them backwards, we can see that they all converge at this point here. And so what we end up with is we end up with a virtual image here. You can only see this virtual image if you look through the lens. You cannot project it onto a screen. So we've got a virtual image at this point, and it's again the right way up. It's on the same side as the object, but the difference now is that this virtual image is smaller than the object. And so this is what a diverging lens will do if you look through one, is it will make objects appear slightly smaller. So here we have a similar situation. We've got our object on this side. We've got our three rays. Again, not necessarily the principal rays, although I've tried to make this front one, uh, the top one parallel, and the bottom one pass through the uh, center of the screen. And here we have a diverging lens. And again, what you should be able to see is that the ray passing through the center of the lens is almost undeflected. The angle, uh, the trajectory remains roughly the same. 
the ray that is parallel here at the top gets refracted and you can see it now it's pointing down slightly and then we get this middle ray that gets refracted by the lens and again we're going to end up with a virtual image these three rays here are not converging however if we trace them back to the other side of the lens we can see that they will come from a point and that point will now be a smaller virtual image that will probably be uh, uh, somewhere in this region here we'll end up with a smaller virtual image that it will appear as if all these three rays are uh, uh, emerging from and so we end up with this diverging lens with a smaller virtual image of the object. So now we've seen how we can use converging and diverging lenses to focus or defocus light and how we can generate an image through using our principal rays as they transmit uh, through the lens. But next we're going to take a quantitative look at lenses. So we're going to work out uh, the exact locations where images will be formed, the type of image that will be formed, and the size of that image. And to do that, we need to develop what we call the lens equation.